Hello everyone and welcome to Gear Time. Our featured camera today, the Sony F5. Yeah. And this sits in the studio. Mm -hmm. And it's a great camera. Pretty much just gets used for green screen applications. We are breaking out the Sonys. Yeah. We have this whole series where we are talking Sony. We did the A7 and now we're talking this. The FS700 is coming back from a shoot later and we're going to yeah. have... It, I know. Not I know my you're... favorite camera. Not my favorite camera. <laughs> we have a videographer on our staff who loves the FS700. Yeah. And, and he has the Odyssey recorder. We, I mean, we bought that thing in 2004. 14? Yeah, so with the Odyssey, you can get some really nice images. But That's what he's doing. It's, uh, that it's a pretty unpleasant setup to use. paid for itself probably by 2015. Yeah. And again, as I've told the story, then we, as you know, we got into the, all the Canons and the C300 and now the C200 and all these other Canons. Yeah. And uh, a lot of C100s here in the room right now. We're shooting a show on C100s, but we're talking about Sony. Yeah. So the, what, do you, what do you remember about uh, the F5 here? So I will preface this. I have heard that sometimes in the comments we get some point out some inconsistencies and mistakes. <laughs> I am not an expert on this camera. Okay. I've used it. That's your disclaimer. Yeah, I've used it maybe a dozen times okay. over a few years. Sure. So um, the F5 it shoots 1080 internally, um, and I there was an upgrade that you could pay for later to get it to do 4K. I don't think this model that we have has it, um, and there is a raw recorder here on the back. And again, I'm not exactly sure exactly what frame rates and shutter or sure. resolutions well, it can do, but we can record raw directly onto the, this. I think it's an R5. And in that same studio mm -hmm. is a C300 that yeah. is also used uh, for, and it's used for a lot of green screen shoots, yeah. executives yeah. or salespeople in front of the green screen. And the editors tell me that this, whatever this shoots in 1080, it's easier to chroma key. It's easier to key somebody out yeah. versus the C300. Huh. At the same, even the 1080 on this is, better, is, is better than the 4K That's... in terms of keying. And I don't know why it is. It have to do with the color space, file size, or something. I have no idea. I would believe both of them are shooting 10-bit 422 internally. Mm -hmm. And so if you had your settings correct, I would think that they would It would keep... be a fairly apples to apples yeah. sort of, but that's, that's what I hear from the editor. Interesting. So what do you know about the current Sony lineup? Because I remember yeah. that right as, as this so, camera was out, there was an, uh, the FS7. So the F5 and F55 came out 2012, 2013, around that time frame. And then in 2014, the FS7 came out. And so I don't want to say these weren't popular because we'll probably hear it. Right. The people who right. love this camera. But the FS7 just took off um, and kind of replaced like the C300 as like the go-to like broadcast camera. And now Sony just released the FX9, which is a full frame version mm -hmm. of the FS7. And so I think Sony's, you know, really going down that FS or FX9, 7, that sure. route. Um, and this hasn't been updated in seven or eight years. It's still a great camera, still oh, shoots yeah. a great image, oh, especially yeah. if you're doing RAW. Um, does a lot of fantastic things, but I don't think we're going to see an update to this. When this leaves the studio, it is because a, a broadcaster has uh, that uses Sony's call. They're coming into town, and they already shoot on Sony, and so they, they ask for either an FS7, or and this works perfectly for that. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. a nice so, camera. Yeah, uh, the giant lens. Uh, yeah. It, it is the giant lens. And the so, lens mount... That you were saying is an F FZ? FZ. So I think this is probably one of the biggest faults of this camera is it has this FZ mount on it. So you can't share lenses with any other Sony camera. Uh, the, maybe there's an adapter. I mean, there's probably, probably. an adapter. Sure. Um, but internally, you can't just hook up any other lens. It came with a PL mount in the box. Um, so you could hook up PL mount lenses through that adapter. Um, and this lens that's attached to it, I want to say is an 18 to 252. But it's also like a 3.5 to like 6.3. So it's variable aperture. It's gigantic. Um, not my favorite lens. Sure. Um, and this but also it looks impressive. It does. And I don't know if there's an adapter to make this work any better, but this has a power zoom on it. So, you know, you could do your. Oh, yeah. But the you old need. Rocker. But there's no rocker on this camera. There's no rocker on the lens. Oh, yeah. This lens was designed. I don't use it a whole lot. For I the Sony F3, which had a rocker built in. So when you're hooked up to the. Uh, F5, I feel like you're losing the reason that you would have bought this lens, the, that power zoom functionality. It does have, I'll turn this for the camera, it does have a lot of outputs. It, it has all of the connections you remember from, it, so if you're the uh, the media pool, you know, and you want to plug in or somebody, you know, or all your clients want to have monitors and, uh, you know, wires running everywhere, this would be, this would be phenomenal. Yeah, so unlike a broadcast environment where you need multiple outputs and time code sync, 
Um, this is going to fit in very nicely. Sure. Uh, overall, uh, the Sony lineup uh, for a camera, at, what is their camera at this price point? I mean, this was, what, I mean, back in the day, this was $30,000, dollars $50,000. I, I, I think it was closer to fifteen or twenty. dollars Okay. Then the F55. The F55 was like $10,000 more than this. Yeah, and so the F55 added 4K support, which then, again, later on, there was an update that you could get this on the F5, and then it also added a global shutter. Oh, and yeah. so what the global shutter does is it eliminates... Um, like your wobbly lines when right. you're panning really fast. So um, that's really, I think, the only advantage today in 2020 to the F55 over, it's rolling shutter, couldn't think of that word, rolling shutter. So the global shutter will eliminate rolling shutter. And the, the new cameras that are coming out that replace the, uh, the uh, FS7, mm -hmm. that series, what's that price point there? What so the, the FX9, uh, I believe, starts at 11. Okay. And uh, there's an adapter box you can slap on the back to get more some of these outputs and raw, and I think that's another two thousand twenty five hundred okay. on top of that. All right. Did we make a mistake by get, going down the can can and leaving these in the studio and not not staying with all the the Sony cameras? Uh, I personally love Canon cameras, um, and I think they're a lot easier to use and a lot easier to get nice images out. So I don't think that was a mistake. But the FS7, the FX9 are super popular, or the FX9 in that case is going to be super popular. It just sure. came out. The FS7 has been um, probably the best-selling camera under $10,000. for. I, I've always liked Sony cameras. And if we go to NAB, we won't be welcome at the Sony booth if we say something <laughs> really bad. But we, no. we like Sony cameras. I do. So. Especially the A7 that we talked about on that other episode. That's it's, where we give shout-out to Sony yeah, for the I, A7. I do love the A7. Um, this, uh, again, just... Little things about the way it works, not my favorite camera to use. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing your opinion and insight and knowledge as always. And thank you for watching Gear Time. We'll see you on the next one.